The ice spindle is a powerful tool that helps you monitor your fermentation specific gravity as well as temperature and the best part is it integrates with apps that you're probably already using and one of those is Brewfather so today I'm going to show you exactly how to link the ice spindle with your Brewfather app. If you've been living under a rock and you don't know what Brewfather is, in my opinion, it is the best and most user-friendly all-in-one brewing tool that you can get. Brewfather allows you to design recipes from scratch or search a massive database of user-created recipes from clones to original creations. It has an inventory to list everything you've got so you can see how your stock levels are going, mash and boil timers, fermentation trackers, multiple device integrations, as well as calculators for things like water additions and yeast amounts. The best part is though, because it's a web-based app, you can move seamlessly from a laptop to a phone to a tablet and you'll be able to pick up exactly where you left off. And they do offer a one month free trial, but I seriously think for the couple of dollars that it costs a month, it is well worth the investment and it's one of the best tools that you can have as a home brewer. So today we're going to talk about one of the coolest features, which is device integration, and we'll get our ice spindle hooked up to the app. The first thing you're going to have to do is to calibrate your ice spindle and get a polynomial formula. That's going to convert the tilt of your ice spindle into specific gravity and it's specific to your ice spindle. So if you haven't done so already, check out my other videos where I go through the full calibration process and I've got heaps more ice spindle tutorials as well as more homebrew content coming soon. So make sure you subscribe as well. For the Brewfather linking, you can use either a specific gravity formula or a Play-Doh formula, but just keep note of which one you're using because we're going to need to know that later. And today, I'm just gonna use a specific gravity formula. We need to modify this formula slightly in order for Brewfather to understand it. Depending on how many points of calibration you've done, you'll have three different formulas you can work with. Degree one, two, and three. Degree one is based off a two-point calibration being the top and bottom points, where degree two and three are based off multi-point calibrations. You can see the difference of how these formulas will read gravity based off of the graph on the right. I'd recommend using the degree three formula if you can for the most accurate results, but any formula will work. We need to take everything after the equal sign of our chosen formula and modify it. And the first thing we need to do is to get rid of any spaces in the formula. Once that's done, we need to replace any of the letter X with asterisk tilt, and the instructions are on the screen now. Once we've modified that formula, hold on to it for a minute and we're going to enter it into the ice spindle in a minute. So now that we've got the formula, we're going to open up Brewfather and enable the option for the ice spindle. First up, we need to open up the Brewfather app on either a phone or a laptop and go into the settings page. After that, we're going to scroll down to the power up section and we're going to enable the ice spindle option. You should now see an address as well as a unique URL which we're going to use to connect the ice spindle to our Brewfather. And just note, if you're using multiple ice spindles in your Brewfather, they're all going to use this same address and URL, but we're just going to give them unique names. Next up, we're going to enter this information into the ice spindle, and to do that, I'm just going to switch it on and connect directly to it over Wi-Fi. Now, if you've already connected it to your home Wi-Fi or set it up with another service, you're going to have to put it in configuration mode to connect to it. So to do that, you're just going to jump the reset pins four times. The blue LED should blink once a second and you'll be in configuration mode and able to connect directly to it. Once we've connected to it, we're going to navigate to the ice spindle homepage, which is 192.168. Dot four dot one. We can now go into the configuration tab and start entering in our information. The first thing we need to do is to let it know which Wi-Fi network we want it to transmit the data through. So just know that this Wi-Fi network has to have an internet connection. Select the network from this list and then just enter the password in the box. Next up, we're going to give the ice spindle a name and just remember if you're using multiples in Brewfather, give each one a unique name here. If you're using a Play-Doh formula, you can leave the name as is. However, if you're using a formula based on specific gravity, you need to let Brewfather know that by adding SG in square brackets to the end of the name. This will let Brewfather know exactly what formula you've entered in. Next up is the update interval, and we're going to change this to 900, which is 900 seconds or once every 15 minutes. And now this is a limitation of Brewfather, which only allows one update every 15 minutes, but that's more than enough data to give us really good results and really see how we're tracking with our fermentation. And if you're doing an even longer ferment and you don't need an update every 15 minutes, you can make this even higher here and the battery will last even longer. 
battery conversion factor we're going to leave for now unless you've found another conversion factor that you need to use if you're getting inaccurate battery voltage. The units of temperature needs to be left on Celsius in order for it to communicate with Brewfather. In the service type we're going to change this to be HTTP and then the token tab we're just going to leave empty. For the server address we're going to copy and paste that address that was given to us in Brewfather into this box. After that it's the port which we're going to leave here at 80. For the path slash URL, we're going to go back to Brewfather and copy in that unique URL that we got given into the ice bindle. And this address is unique to our own Brewfather app. The last step is to add our polynomial formula, which we converted earlier in order for Brewfather to understand it. Once we've pasted that in, we can click save and the ice spindle will reset. Once the ice spindle resets, it should now connect to that Wi-Fi network that we just specified in Brewfather. And from now on, if you want to connect directly to the ice spindle over Wi-Fi, you're going to have to put it in that configuration mode by jumping the reset pins four times. All right, so now that that's set up, let's jump back into Brewfather and get it set up as a device. In your Brewfather app, you should now have a devices tab and see the ice spindle listed inside. We can enable it here now and we should see the ice spindle pop up. The ice spindle will show up in the list after its first successful transmission which should be straight away as soon as it reset. But just remember for some reason if it failed the first one we did set the update interval to 15 minutes so it might take that long for it to show up. You should now be able to see the date and time of the last transmission as well as what the temperature and specific gravity were reported as. It will also show the reported angle battery voltage and RSSI, which is the signal strength of the Wi-Fi connection. If you select the gear icon, you can change the gravity and temperature offset if you find the readings are slightly off, but we're just gonna leave this for now. And with that, congratulations, you've linked the ice spindle with your Brewfather account, and the only thing left to do is to choose what batch you wanna track and link the ice spindle to that. Once you've sent a recipe to the brewing stage, if you go over to the fermentation tab, you should see a section called readings. Click on the gear icon for devices and the ice spindle should show up in the list. If you have more than one ice spindle linked with your account, you can choose whichever one you like here and you can track multiple fermentations at the same time. All we need to do is select the ice spindle we want and click attach and it will automatically be added in the readings tab and will start logging for us. Just remember that Brewfather has that 15 minute limit so it might take that long for the first reading to appear here and try and attach it as a device after you've finished moving everything around it just stops those first readings being inaccurate from it moving around so after that everything else is automated for us it's going to turn itself on every 15 minutes do a reading turn itself off and go back to sleep and that's just going to let us know when we can dry hop if we've got a stuck fermentation if our fermentation's over if we need to raise or lower the temperature and that's it. The good news is, now that we've done that full setup process, all that we have to do between batches is fully charge the battery and it's ready to go. Once we switch it on and put it in a fermenter again, we can choose it as a device in that fermentation tab and just attach it there. And just keep in mind, when we are charging it between batches, we want to try and avoid moving it inside that tube so that we don't affect the calibration of the ice spindle. And there it is, one of the best new brewing technologies linked with one of the best brewing tools on the market and it really gives us a good insight into what's actually going on inside our fermenters. So I hope the video was helpful for you and if you like it, please subscribe to the channel. I've got heaps more homebrew content coming out soon. Cheers.